And then shit really hit the fan. Like atomic bomb dropped. <laughs> um it was bad. It it was bad. It's me, Mrs. M. Padilla. Um, today, I am coming to you guys. I actually um, have been put on semi-bed rest because I've been having um, a couple of issues with um, carrying this little baby. But um, nothing like, nothing like really major. Um, can't, well, it's just been a, a, a ride, a rough ride. Uh, we've had to go to the emergency three times, but, uh, thank God there was nothing like seriously major the wrong with me or the baby. But because of, um, how many children I've had and the size of Olivia, there's a couple of um, different things that's going on. You guys like my shirt? My sister bought it for me. I so needed this in the beginning <laughs> of um, my pregnancy. I so needed it. I don't know. What is it with people that think they can just put their hands on your, like, really all in your space? But anyway, back to what I was saying. Um so i was put on uh semi bed rest maternity leave because it has become hard for me to um walk long distances to sit for a long period of time i cannot bend down i cannot crouch i cannot um basically <laughs> i can do a lot of stuff can't do a lot of stuff um which brings me to why i'm creating this video series it's going to be a series of different videos and um it's just something that was on my heart a couple of um things i would like to address about having a baby after the age of 35. um so a little backstory is um I had my last child in um, 2004 in a previous relationship. Um, of course, this was before I met my husband. And um, so at that time, I, I was young and I thought in my mind, um, because of the situation I was in, the relationship I was in, I didn't want to have any more children. Um, and truth be told, I really didn't want to have any more children by him. Um, so um, I went through a process of getting um, my tubes tied. And that was in 2004. Actually, uh, two months after I had my last child. And the reason that they allowed me to do it is because he was my third. So um, usually you can only do it if you've had three or more children or if um, you're over a certain age, and if you're if you're married, they will only do it if your partner, your husband, wife, whatever, signs off on it. Um, so anyway, I was young, and plus I was, I won't say I was peer pressured into doing it, cause back then I I. I did do a lot of things to please other people. I did do a lot of things that um, basically, yeah, to please other people so that people wouldn't, I have already felt like I was a disappointment because I was a stereotype, three kids, single, um, single parent, three kids, 
even though I was in a relationship with um, my children's father at the time, he was not, he was not, uh, he was no help. Absolutely no help. Like, I don't want to say so much because my kids do watch these videos and I've made it my point not to badmouth him in front of them or talk about him at all like in real life unless they ask a question i don't give them i don't talk about him at all like there's no point so i try i'm trying my best to say it uh in a way that um anyway I was a single parent. <laughs> I was a single parent and um I just didn't want any more children. I got my tools tied. And a couple months later, no, not no, a year later, a year later, um I met my husband. And even at that time, um I still, I still had three kids. My youngest was a year, so babies were not on my mind. Anyway, so um, fast forward to me getting married and um, my husband and I talking about having children. And I don't know how many of you guys are um, spiritual, are Christians, whatever, but um. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that God speaks to you. I believe um, in, well, we both believe that we believe in the prophetic. We believe um, that God gives us these desires, these wants uh, of our heart. And um, so one day, uh, God. Well, I think it was an oh, so I was sitting in church and I saw my husband. Now he had never said anything to me about having a child before this. He didn't. He didn't speak about it. He, you know, he was just being a dad to three children um, that was not his, and he just embraced that. Um, which I will literally give a big ups to him because he was in his early 20s he was like 22 21 22 and it takes a big man to do that to take on somebody else's children to love them as they were his own at that age like he and that's another reason why i was attracted to him because he um he was very mature for his age at times <laughs> but anyway so uh he was going around the offering um giving our offering and when he hit the corner because where we sit it's like um we sit right directly like two seats behind um our bishop and our pastor so and it, we sit on the edge of the main aisle so when he was coming around like literally i saw it clear as day clear as day him holding a little person's hand coming around smiling down at him and i remember the look of it was a little boy and i remember his the look of this little boy he looked like he was the son of my husband and I, I'm like, I was taken aback. And, and at, by that time, when it, when the vision left me, Jose was sitting next to me. And I was like, you won't believe what I just saw. <laughs> you just won't believe what I just saw. And so I told him and, um, I told him what I saw. I said, I saw you walking around with, and I knew it in my heart. I was like, our son. And he, at first he looked at me all kinds of crazy. And then later on that day, he confessed that it was a desire of his heart to have his own child. So, um, didn't really too much. I mean, it was on our mind. It was on our, it was on our heart. Um, but at that time, I can't 
you know, uh, give him a child. So this, and, and so we stepped out on faith and we said, okay, God, if this is your will, let us know. And it was so funny because at that time, um, my friend who is the mother of my godson, um, my friend, she came to me. She just showed up at the house one day and she had a bag in her hand and she said she was taking a nap and she was taking a nap and then God just woke her up out of her nap and told her to go and buy us something. And when she came to our door, why did she have a baby bag? Uh, it was a blue bag and inside of the blue bag was a baby onesie. Uh, a bib and I do th I think it was a bottle and she said God said give this to you <laughs> so it was like confirmation okay God said we are gonna have now like she just showed up like we didn't discuss this with anybody I don't think we didn't discuss this with anybody. So she just showed up and said, God told her to buy this for us. And she gave it to her. So, of course, we were just like, oh, my God, over the moon. So anyway, um, fast forward. Um, we started to believe that, okay, God, if this is your will. Now, we would pray about it. We would every year. So we thinking like, okay, God going to do this divinely. Yeah, we're going to see this huge miracle. And um, so we were just super excited. And that lasted for eight years. <laughs> eight years. Um, not going to lie. It was tough eight years because we were, we constantly believed that God was going to do this. We constantly got confirmation. We constantly got words, like people who didn't even know us. Um, they were speaking to our lives that my my husband would have a son. My husband would have his own children. And it was like, it was encouraging, but it was also frustrating. Um, but we continued to believe. And it even got to a point where, I'm I'm going to be honest. Um, I didn't want to hear it anymore. I didn't want to hear the promise. I didn't want to hear the prophetic word. I didn't want to hear, uh, people say, Oh, you're next. When somebody got, um, uh, pregnant and stuff like that, I, it got to that point where we were like, cause first of all, we couldn't afford at the time we could not afford to get, um, surgery to reverse. We couldn't afford IVF. So it was like, um, that's why we believed so wholeheartedly that he was just going to miraculously let this happen. Um, so fast forward to um, 2016. It was the year of acceleration, 2016. And my sister, who I really don't speak to um, like that, I have three sisters, um, I talk to two the most, um, but this particular sister, um, we had grown apart and um, we really didn't speak we like that all the time. So um, one day out of the blue, uh, it was in October, the end of October, out of the blue, October, November area. And she said, hey, are you and Jose still trying to have a child? Because um, her cousin on her mom's side had surgery too. And she said, and she's very much pregnant. I'm here at her baby shower <laughs> like right now she's very much pregnant and she said she didn't spend a lot of money on her surgery so i'm like yes we are still trying to have a baby and this was after we had just stopped not stop trying not stop believing but we just stopped focusing on having 
this baby. It's just start focused on it. We started focusing on different things like building our business, building our income, um, buying a house. We just started, we redirected our focus. We weren't so focused on having this child. So when we did that, that's when she contacted us and was like, hey, you guys, are you, you know, and of course, like, yeah, yeah, we are. So uh, she got in contact, the girl got in contact with us. We found out all the information and um, the affordable price. And it was just amazing because even then, uh, everything was lining up. Everything was lining up for us to be able to pay for it to get to where we needed to get to to even have the surgery um it it, it was just like literally a season of acceleration a season of the promises coming it was just absolutely amazing so um we made our appointment and actually we took a trip and I, we made a video actually my very first plane ride you guys can check that out right here um and in the video i mentioned it was an eight year um blessing coming and that's what i was talking about so we went we had the surgery um we came back home and a couple of let me see i had the surgery in the end of april and we couldn't try until june because i had to go through a whole healing process so um we had in june right so we tried the first cycle in june nothing so we're like okay whatever um and i thought i was in july let me tell you about false positive pregnancy test is from the devil like seriously so we got a false positive in july i think it was and um but then i started bleeding like three days later because my um my period was um late it was like a week and a half late and i'm never late i know that's tmi i'm sorry but you know you get the gist of it so then we got and then we got the uh positive so we like yes you know it was at home uh, test and he's like yes we we pregnant whatever that I told him and then the next day I started bleeding and so it got worse the day after and we rushed to the hospital I mean I was crying because I thought I was miscarrying um I, I mean I was shaking he was he was nervous he was shaking and come to find out I wasn't pregnant at all so <laughs> then began the downward spiral um we got depressed we did um we got depressed we and it, it started affecting a lot of things um i think we it's we got depressed because we were highly disappointed um and we thought that we got our hopes up too quickly and it just wasn't going to work out and you know the enemy comes to steal your joy and kill your your happiness and that's what happened so we thinking in our head um it's not gonna happen we went through all this and we might have to wait eight more years because um we had i i'm part of a um a group on facebook where women had had their reversal and they still haven't been pregnant and it's been years so of course now i'm thinking oh i'm not gonna get pregnant in years so we ended up um we had our anniversary our eight year anniversary and if anybody knows uh the spiritual number eight means new beginnings. So we were we were excited about that. We knew we were going to have new beginnings. We really didn't. Um, we were have our new beginnings, and we really didn't. I don't know. 
I think like around there, I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, this is the time we might have, um, we might get lucky. So fast forward to September, I felt strange. Um, but by this time, um, there was a strain, a darkness, a cloud, and it, it was, it was a lot of things that was happening. A lot of things going on in our lives and um and it was causing a strain on us mentally um spiritually it it just caused a lot of strain it was a strain on the children um they were sad we hated coming home um it was it was it was a bad bad situation bad season um and then we found out we were pregnant. And we were very, very excited. We were so excited. Um, I think I, when I first found out, I was more excited than he was. Uh, well, cause he don't show excitement like I show excitement. He was excited because I could tell, he wanted to tell everybody. Uh, so we waited um, cause we didn't want to, uh, no. I didn't wait. I know I, I told um, particular people, mainly the ones who were closest to me. I know I told my mom. I told my sister. Um, uh, well, the sister I'm closest with. Um, I told my mom the day I found out. I told my sister the day I found out. I told my best friend the day I found out. And I, the next day I told my big sister. Shamanda, my big sister, my big spiritual sister, I told her because she had been praying with us and she had been, um, she is also um, waiting on her promise as well. And um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm not going to say anything, but I'm excited for her. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we, so we told those closest to us. Um, Oh, I told my auntie, of course. You know, I told my auntie. Um, what else? And then, shit really hit the fan. Like, atomic bomb dropped. <laughs> um, it was bad. It, it was bad.